Well, good evening, everyone. Meteorologist Michael Wilhite here with Southern Indiana Weather, bringing you a forecast update here. We've got some rain and could be some heavy rain moving our way here. It is about 6.55, just shy of 7 p.m. Eastern time here, and it is Tuesday, the 23rd of February. There comes the rain looping here over the last several hours, and you can see some severe weather going on down to our south. A very bad day going on to them. Numerous tornadoes reported down there with uh, this, but uh, that stays out of our way. Severe weather free tonight, but we do have some pretty heavy precipitation moving our way. In fact, this is going to rotate up towards us, and our whole area is going to get a nice little soaking worth of rain out of this. We stop the motion here and we zoom in just a little bit closer. Temperatures really not that bad around the area. Still hanging in the low to mid-50s across southern Indiana. But there's the rain here at the 7 p.m. hour just uh, edging up here uh, into Kentucky. And by about 8 o'clock or so tonight, should be starting to enter southern Indiana here. And, of course, the rain is moving more towards the north out of this. So you'll be coming to the rain from the south. Ohio River County is getting wet first here tonight. But we will all get wet with this as we go on throughout the night. How much rain can we expect? Well, it's going to be a good soaker, uh, toad, stranger, gully washer, whatever you want to call it, a good uh, oh, uh, two to even a little bit higher uh, than two inches totals around the area. So a uh, solid soaking of rain coming for us as far as that's concerned. Now, let's time this out on future radar. We will have some wintry weather concerns for some people, but not for most of us. Southern Indiana largely going to be spared the wintry weather out of this, going to get end up uh, more on the uh, rain side of things. Do you think we will see some snow, but it'll be on the back side of the system. Let me show you what I'm talking about. There's that rain uh, shield as it is down to our south moving to the north. There's the low pressure system that's causing all this. That tracks our way as we continue to put this into motion. Rain expands overnight and really you can expect it to be heavy at times. Wouldn't even rule out a few uh, lightning strikes there and some rumbles of thunder, but uh, you know, thunder not a huge uh, lightning, not a huge concern with this, but I certainly think it would be possible. As we start our uh, into descent into the overnight hours, you notice some snow starts to mix back in on the uh, western and northwestern side of this low that becomes more numerous over time as the low deepens as it continues on notice that it tracks right along us and, and so here we are by about uh, 10 a.m. or so tomorrow morning and you got the low right along the Ohio River here right uh, very pretty close to Tell City just to the south of that there you got a heavy swath of snow off to our north and off to our west but watch how this starts to expand as the low moves right over us that continues us in the rain <clears throat> typically what you see excuse me typically what you see in the uh, in the snow swath in a system like this uh, is is you get the snow about 100 to 150 miles away from the center of that low pressure with that low pressure moving right over southern Indiana that's going to spare most of us going to end up being a rain could end up being a fairly significant winter storm uh, for portions of Illinois and into northern Indiana but as you see, as this low starts to move away, that's when later in the evening we start to see some of those change to light snow showers. But by the time that low is pulling away, we don't have a whole lot of moisture left with this. And so the precipitation changing over is pretty light. That will linger around through the overnight hours. We might even have some flurries still around the area as we start off our day on Thursday morning. But that will push through the day uh, here on Thursday. And then uh, we'll certainly be gone after that. Now, as far as any road problems would be concerned with that, probably not looking at major concerns with this uh, for us here in southern Indiana at least. Temperatures right now here in the low 50s around the area will go down uh, pretty uh, pretty significantly overnight. By the time you hit uh, 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, you're looking at temperatures near 40 degrees, upper 30s here as you get into uh, the Washington uh, area. Then as you put this into motion here, don't really warm up much over the day. Uh, 40, 42, 44, probably about the most we would achieve tomorrow, the way things are looking for this, at least over on this side of it. Now, over uh, closer towards that low on the warmer side of it, you'll remain in the 50s there. But for most of us, uh, not so much. As that low exits towards the uh, off towards the northeast there, you notice we start to cool down, though. And this is here about 5 o'clock in the afternoon. We're still hanging in the mid-30s. And as that, uh, as that low continues to exit off, though, notice even though whenever the rain would be changing over to snow, we're still sitting at about 39 in Louisville and 34 here in southwest Indiana, even 33 still up in Indy. And, of course, as we put this into motion through the overnight hours, we never actually 
actually even hit the freezing mark there. We stick around about 33, 34 degrees uh, around the area. Now, if that's the case, we're not really going to have anything significant to worry about as far as road problems. Any accumulation that we do end up getting with snow here in southern Indiana would be very light, and it looks like it would be limited to grassy areas, cars, roadways, with the surface temperatures being the way they are now and with, with the air temperatures not going down to freezing. Um, you're probably going to have a hard time getting uh, major uh, concerns on the roadways the way things look to me at this point. Now, how much? Uh, let's we'll talk. Well, let's talk about wind first before we get into how much snow we can expect. The wind's going to be the other big story with this. As I put this into motion, as the low approaches, notice the gusty winds start to come over us, and these uh, purple shades indicating that at times we could get uh, 30 uh, mile per hour winds out of this. So it's going to be a, a breezy kind of a day with this. Certainly, hold on uh, to your hats. How much snow can we expect? Models varying a little bit. The NAM model here seeming to be fairly reasonable on the snow positioning. And you notice you go from uh, not much of anything here in Indiana where we get the rain uh, to the snow, some significant totals out here in Illinois. And really just outside of, uh, of the Wabash River, you start to get those snow totals ramp up. Uh, but that's not the only model that we use. And there are some disagreements as you, listen to, as you look at the GFS. Notice some significant differences in the uh, GFS model here. Here's the NAM model here. You notice those heavier snow accumulations are uh, sort of all over into here. Uh, if we were to put this back over onto the GFS, though, notice that the heavier snow accumulations further to the west out here with this. Still some issues with this. Now, the ECMWF actually uh, agrees more with the NAM, only it's going uh, just ridiculous on its snow totals. I mean, as you can see, it's just putting obscene snow totals down through here. Uh, even a foot plus of snow in this purple striping up through here. That's probably a little bit much, but notice how close these snow totals are to us. Uh, most of us in southern Indiana staying sort of in the rain zone and, and getting pretty much less than an inch out of this. Uh, but as you get closer towards the Wabash River and things, that's where you might start to see uh, some snow a little bit more mixing in with this. So it's something that we're going to have to watch. I think the, uh, the Euro and the NAM kind of have some reasonable uh, ideas with this at this point. And I think there's going to be a sharp cut off this from not a whole lot of snow. Really, for most of us, though, here in southern Indiana, as the system exits, you can expect maybe under an inch of snow, probably at best, we're going to hope for with this. does not look like a big thing. By the time the system's departing and the colder air crashes in where it can change that rain over to snow, we just don't have much moisture left, and so we're going to get very limited accumulations out of this. Pretty significant snows up to the north. I feel sorry for the Indy forecasters, though. Uh, you, you've got some, uh, you get a tough uh, decision on your hands on what you go for. 1.6 inches being forecast by the NAM model in Indianapolis, 1.6 up there for the GFS, but if you go closer towards the Euro, you got more significant totals right there. So, <clears throat> and even out to our west, what do you do? Do you go with a foot or or no? Uh, this puts it further to the west, or this one only has it about seven inches. Folks, it's been a wild year in the models, and I'm glad this is one storm, one snowstorm that's not going to really affect much of southern Indiana because this is a nightmare to pin down snow totals on. Have fun with it, all of my colleagues in the areas that are being in, uh, impacted. I'm really glad we're missing this, mostly just rain for us. Here's the way the 10-day forecast shapes out, and oh, by the way, let me just mention this. Why are the models so bad? I've gotten several questions about that over the over recent months. Just to remember, uh, El Nino. And that's the bottom line. Normally, we could have had a, had this system pinned down two or three days ago under a normal winter and had at least been reasonably close. But there's still so wide variances in this, and the event's just about to happen to us. Uh, El Nino is really messing with the models. When we have a super El Nino like this, which has only happened, you know, you can count that on, on five or six times that that's ever really happened in the course of our, of our weather forecasting here since the 50s. Well, it just it doesn't mess well with, it doesn't go well with our models, and that's the short and sweet to the point reason why our models suck so bad this year. Nothing we can do about it. Once El Nino fades, hopefully things will get a little bit better though. Here's your forecast though. Go to southernindianaweather.com. Click on 10-day forecast. Can we go down to the low to mid 40s across the area tonight? Rain comes in heavy at times. Heavy rain likely tomorrow. Will be breezy. Hang on to your hatch. Bring your umbrella with you there. Some toad stranglers are coming, people. Cloudy, that rain changes to some light snow showers, though, Wednesday evening into the overnight hours. Again, not a whole lot. As the system departs, though, on Thursday, we only go up to a high around 36, less than one inch snow total around the area. But hey, 
Got some nice news after this, though. We've been spoiled with this warmer weather, but we're going to get it back again. 40 Saturday up to the 50s, mid-60s again for the weekend with some sunshine. So, hey, that'll be nice. At least we got pleasant weather sticking around again. I know there were some people saying, oh, this is, we're going to get cold again. Well, we did, but uh, in typical El Nino fashion, we're getting cold for a couple of days before we start to warm up again. By far, we've been warm much more than we have been cold uh, this winter. That pattern looks to continue as we end February and begin March. Folks, that's it for this update. I'll have a long-range update out for you later in this week. I'm meteorologist Michael Wilhite. Have a great night, folks.